Wow, we got the championship coach of the power, Big the Big Three. Big Three, baby, Big Three. Oh, man. B-I-G Tree. Hey. Nancy Lady Magic Lieberman is here. Hi, Nancy. Nancy. Yes, she looks great. I was there. It was good, wasn't it? Wasn't it? I was at the championship game last year. I was at the press conference at the end. I think I might even shot you a question and you looked at me strangely like, why Why aren't you playing on my team? I don't think she was thinking I, that. I, I don't think <laughs> that happened. You don't, you don't I'm recall not that? sure, but... You, you, don't, uh, you don't remember that, huh? Uh, I don't. Okay. I was too busy listening to uh, Quentin Richardson talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. He was awesome, wasn't he? Yeah, he was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning, team. Good How morning. Are you? Good morning. I love uh, it. Got the Yankee hat going. Yes, indeed. Uh, Nancy Lady Magic Lieberman is here. I love that name, Lady Magic. College. College. I was whipping passes around for two years, and then Magic Johnson comes to play <clears throat> our men's team in a holiday tournament. Mm -hmm. And the next day in the Virginia Pilot, it said, if they call him Magic, she must be Lady Magic, because she's been doing this for two years. He's doing this for two days. Oh, and it stuck. And it stuck. Yes. So you was doing it before Magic? Uh, I'd like to think so. Wow, you were the first. There it is. So shouldn't she be magic and he be man, man magic? magic? Man magic. <laughs> man magic? Or magic yeah. man. Ma or okay. magic Mike. Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. no, we just went in a whole different yeah. direction. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I, I like that. A uh, lot of things she's done, DB. We were talking about this this morning uh, when we were talking to our, our listeners about having you come up and, and some of the ways you uh, – broke ground in basketball in many ways, being a, a, a head coach in the NBA, um, um, winning a silver medal in the Olympics and um, all the uh, accolades you received, the Hall of Fame, uh, being a Hall of Fame recipient in how many different organizations. Uh, is, is this you? I've had a great career. There it is. I've had a great career, <laughs> yes. and it was because I loved the game. And growing up, you know, here in New York, mm -hmm. <clears throat> growing up in Brooklyn, growing up in, you know, in Far Rockaway, spending a lot of uh, my formative years, like uh, 11, 12, 13 years old, playing at Rucker Park. And mm -hmm. the guys really toughened me up, and they championed me. I'm very grateful to so many of the African-American guys uh, when I hate to say it, when white people were telling me I was stupid and dumb and never make anything of myself because mm -hmm. I was a you know, little redheaded girl, mm -hmm. uh, I was championed by the black community uh, to be whatever I wanted to be, and that fueled my dreams. Then I fall in love with Muhammad Ali, and he didn't know that he was giving me a roadmap to success, mm -hmm. and I was lucky. You know, you get a, a scholarship to college or play in the Olympics when you're in high school. Mm -hmm. And then I get to meet Ali, and my life changed. Um, we were friends to the day we buried him three years ago. Wow, man. What what was it um, when you met him? I mean, obviously, Ali was the uh, the first book report I ever did as a youth in elementary was a, about Muhammad Ali. So I was so inspired by him, too, but I didn't get a chance to meet him. What was it that he said to you? Well, I was doing an appearance at the New York Stock Exchange. It was a fundraiser in December of 79 for the Olympic Committee. And I was starting to feel good about myself. Old Dominion had won their first championship. I was player of the year in college basketball. And when I met him, I think he could just see through me that I was fraudulent, uh, that I was hiding behind who I was. Mm -hmm. But I was kind of broken because, you know, I, I had no father, no food, no heat, no electricity. And I, I lived an angry childhood because of my circumstances mm -hmm. and and I needed sports more than sports needed me and for some reason he saw through who I was and he promised me that day he said there'll never be a day I won't be in your life so he taught wow. me about racism he taught me about philanthropy he taught me about you know there are two people in life they're givers and takers mm -hmm. and I want you to be a giver he mm -hmm. had such a great faithful heart and he just had such a profound uh, effect on how I viewed things. Th there was a reason he was the people's champ yeah. because he would get out of a car in Manhattan and he'd say, stop the car. And there'd be guys on the corner, you know, with a garbage can and just some heat. And he'd just get out and start talking to them and he engaged them and he cared about people. And, you know, uh, he just taught me about humility and confidence. And mm. I'm a better person today 
because of the Muhammad Ali effect. He knew I was going to coach in the NBA, by the way, before I knew I was going to coach wow. in the NBA. Wow, he told you this? He told me this. Yeah. And then he showed up for my first game. Uh-huh. Can you imagine, like, DeMarcus Cousins and Rondo and all the guys going, "Is the champ is here. Yeah. And then Rondo goes, oh, yeah, that's Coach's friend. I'm talking about street cred? Uh-huh. Right, exactly. <laughs> what a co-side. Uh, it, was, it was unbelievable, and he took pictures with the guys. And, uh-huh. you know, that was six, seven months before he died. Uh-huh. So, uh, you know, really what you see in me uh, and how I am, a little humor, a lot of sarcasm, but a lot of truth. Yeah. That's who I am. Yeah. And and I'm too too old and been around this game too long to be, you know, throwing you know, BS around. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I'm just here to help people and change people's lives from my players to my son. Shit, man, you make me nasty, Lieberman. What the yeah. hell is happening right here? We so well spoken. Testimonials this morning, Heather B. Absolutely. 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 Um, you know, I had a chance. I want to ask you so many different questions about what's going on in the NBA and all these different trades that's happening, especially um, the most recent one uh, that we've been reading about and hearing about with Russell Westbrook. Um, going to Houston, and I know you were a commentator for the Thunder at one point, right? Yes. Um, and Wait, he's going to Houston? Th- I mean, no, he's not I'm, coming to Big Three? No, they didn't mm. tell you that? No. Oh, I thought no, he was coming you, to no, my no, league. No, no, no. Thought, yeah, that is, yeah. He yeah. could get a triple-double, no, yeah. and he'd be great playing alongside Corey Maggette and yeah. Big Baby Davis. Big Baby Davis? Da- well, Big Baby, well, I thought he got deactivated. No, he's activated. <laughs> Seriously. He is activated? He is activated. He was yeah, fined. Uh, but yeah, there are a lot of things going on, uh-huh. uh, not only in the big three, uh-huh. uh, with our you know power lunch today yeah. that is being hosted by Toyota, mm-hmm. with Lisa Leslie and uh, who's now she's coaching too. She's coaching. coaching I'm too. really proud. Well, congratulations to Lisa Leslie. Yeah. Uh huh. Amy Trask, uh-huh. who's uh, the chairwoman of the board. A lot of great things happening. And how about this? I, I get equal pay. Yay! No, okay. So that's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Just, just, we, We've been watching the, the <laughs> American soccer, soccer yeah. women's yeah. soccer team fighting for this for years, and it made me think of you in that regard, too. Um, <laughs> what do you think about their courage? I mean, they're emboldened. They're pow- you know, they, they, they're unapologetic. They're screaming it out loud. I love what U.S. soccer did. I, mm-hmm. I'm really, uh, like everybody else, you know, I fell in love with them and the excitement that they brought and a lot of eyeballs here in the United States. But let me just say one thing that people are not talking about. And I am for equality, inclusion, uh-huh. diversity, but I am also have to lay out facts. Okay. Men in the World Cup brought in $6 billion. Mm-hmm. The women in the World Cup brought in 131 million. So we have to stop looking at the top end and the low end and going, there's this, it's discrimination. No, this is business. Okay. This is not discrimination. Uh, when U.S. soccer negotiated with the men, the men chose not to take a salary. They hedged their bet on them. The women chose to take a salary and each got $100,000 mm-hmm. and then bonuses. So everybody negotiates differently. Uh-huh. So I want us to have equality. But if $6 billion are coming in on the men's side, and I know we're in America, and all of our eyes were on the women's team. Everybody here this morning, tell me who the men play, the U.S. men's team play. Tell me. Who? Mexico. Okay, one one. That's one person. guy, one guy, yeah, that guy. Because nobody, nobody gave a rat's behind uh-huh. about what was going on because they weren't you know that competitive mm-hmm. so everybody thinks that because there was so much enthusiasm in america for women's soccer it wasn't like that around the world it was here in america which i dig because this is this is our country this is where we do business but i think if you look at it from pure numbers yeah uh you can't ignore the numbers but we can fight for equality, and what are we doing to grow our sport? Mm-hmm. What are we growing, doing to grow the WNBA? The, the women of the WNBA are not going to get a $184 million contract. Mm-hmm. We have to grow our sport. We're working hard at it, but we can't keep pointing fingers at men and saying, you're holding me back. Men have championed me in everything that I've done in life, uh, whether it was coaching in the NBA, coaching the NBA D-League with Donnie Nelson, mm-hmm. with the Mavericks, uh, I was hired by Rick Sund, former GM of the Dallas Mavericks, uh, with the Detroit Shock. Ice Cube 
is a yeah. cultural changer. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. What he's done not only for me and Lisa Leslie and many other people. Mm -hmm. And we women can't point the finger at men because you guys care about us and respect us. We have a responsibility to grow our sport. Yeah. So we have to have some skin in the game also. I I'm, I'm tough on us because I want more for us. Mm-hmm. That's my rant. You know, you brought up go Yankees, I, 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 go Yankees right? <laughs> go, 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 Athletics. Uh, you brought up Ice Cube, and um, I was there last year. And Ice Cube is a, a a great friend of mine. I've known him for decades, and I was really blown blown away by what he had to say about you. Cube, you heard Nancy say that she's appreciated and humbled by the opportunity that both you and Jeff have given her. What does this mean in the second year to have power be the champions of the Big Three League? Oh, it's incredible, you know. It's a, it, it's a it's a new day in sports. Uh, when Nancy, when I had her on the phone and she asked me, you know, why do we want her to be the coach of power? And uh, I said, because uh, I think she can win the championship. And uh, here we are. You know, she won the championship. Let's break all these ceilings. Let's break all these barriers. A female can do anything in sports. Ice Cube. Yay, yay. Couldn't that game? Couldn't that game? I thought he was going to hire Felicia, but he hired me. He hired, yeah. <laughs> Nancy Lieberman is here. You want to speak with her? 888-742-3345. Sway in the morning. The home of champions. Lady Magic. Even before Magic Johnson. Wow. That's crazy. That is crazy. Sway in the morning, shade four five. Man, we got special guest Nancy Lady Magic Lieberman yep. is here from the Big Three yeah. Championship coach of Team Power. Uh, big Three has been making some big announcements um, today about some staff and um, player changes. Um, Nancy, today you're going to be speaking at a on a panel at a Power Lunch, right? It is the Big Three uh, Power Lunch with Amy Trask, mm -hmm. who uh, is our CEO, Chairman of the Board, I should say. The great Lisa Leslie, mm -hmm. um, who is uh, coaching in the league with uh, the triplets. Uh, Toyota is in lockstep with us. Mm -hmm. uh, they celebrate women. Uh, they don't tolerate women. And they're giving us a, a platform to be able to share our stories of how we end up at the same you know, at the same place in our journey. Mm -hmm. So we're real appreciative. We need more of these conversations. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like... People need to hear how things happen. Like people see me today and they see me polished up and they don't know what it was like at eight, nine, ten years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I didn't know if I was going to kill myself, join a gang, uh, carjack somebody or beat somebody up because I was angry. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm glad I didn't do any of those things. And by the grace of God, I'm here with you guys. Yeah. And I really appreciate you having us on. Absolutely. I still feel like you could beat somebody up if you wanted to. Yeah. I feel like you got that in you. Well, you know, when I went met Muhammad uh, the first time, and I was like, yeah, you know, I, you know, and we start talking, and I go, and I hit people too, you know, like I have my accent because mm -hmm. I, I had to go to elocution school to be articulate uh, when I started doing TV for ESPN. Did you really? Oh yeah, I was like, yo, how you doing? The ball went to the center, and at the end of the quarter, she took that shot in the lane. You know what I mean, Jay? And he goes, <laughs> what? I said, you can't understand me. What's wrong with you? And then they sent me to elocution school. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Damn, damn and, and, as an adult, that's the, the great thing about it, right? It was crazy. So so I, when I first met Ali, and I was so excited, and I'm hyperventilating, and my heart is pounding. And I'm like, Yo, I, I, Mr. Muhammad, I hit people too. He goes, I'm going to ask you to stop hitting people. I'm like, you do? And he goes, I get paid to hit people. You need conflict resolution. I'm like, what's that word? What'd you just say? <laughs> <laughs> so he knew I was damaged good, but he he he, he bought me anyway. <laughs> Muhammad Ali, man, round of applause every time she says Muhammad Ali's name. Tracy G. Yes, Lady Magic. Um, going back to what you were saying with the women's soccer team, um, I'm wondering for the WNBA, for as far as the area of improvement, do you think that it's marketing? Is it the level of skills? Is it social conditioning? Because women oftentimes don't have an issue with watching, you know, just taking part in any male-dominated field, but a lot of times men don't necessarily take part in women-dominated fields. Where do you think that we could upgrade? I always start with us first. Like when I'm evaluating or doing a game plan, I always start with us. What is my team doing? Mm -hmm. So my team is women. What are we doing? Uh, we're trying to go to Europe 
because a lot of the athletes are trying to have generational wealth, which there's nothing wrong with that because it can break a cycle of poverty. It could send relatives to college. There's so many great things that can happen from that. So I don't take that lightly that a lot of the women play in the WNBA for three months and then they go to Europe for seven, eight, or nine because they've, they've had to do that. So uh, what's the solution? The solution to me is this. Women play the game but are not fans of the game. Men play the game uh -huh. and then you become fans of the game and mm. you're buying season tickets. And I would ask every former WNBA player over the last 23 years, take your hand, go in your purse, and instead of buying a pair of shoes or a, a, a Prada purse or whatever, go buy a season ticket for your local WNBA team. I have 10 season tickets for the Dallas Wings. When I'm not using them, I give them uh, to underserved uh, organizations for their children That's what's up. so they could experience and, and fuel their dream because that happened for me in, in Madison Square Garden back in 1975 when I saw women play in the garden uh -huh. before I ever went to college. So I, I think we have to be able to make some choices. Maybe the, the W pays two star players on each team there's 12 teams may you pay them two hundred thousand dollars and their salary and they stay in the market and if you're truly pioneers and trailblazers which we are mm -hmm. and not just me they are today stay in the market come on these shows start promoting it do clinics make yourself accessible and available to your community at large and then I think we can you know start you know, turning those people into fans, ticket buying, jersey buying, fans of the WNBA. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, right. but we can't have an expectation and not have skin in the game. Right. Yeah. So I think it was Maya Angelou who said, "Don't go through life with two mitts. If you if you're all you're doing is catching, mm -hmm. you're a taker." you know throw something back uh -huh. and throwing something back could be our time our energy uh leading with love and kindness and and really being tremendous role models the WNBA players are absolutely stupendous they're beautiful they're smart they're they really are great gatekeepers of the game but they also have to understand that they're still pioneers. Yeah. What, what 20, 23 years later. Not to cut you off, but what kind of um support like with the is it different from the NBA than the WNBA in terms of what kind of financial backing that the the, the organization have put behind the players, behind the teams and what Tracy's saying in terms of marketing and promotion and is it a different animal or is it all the same umbrella? Well, it's kind of one umbrella, but it's a separate umbrella. When I first started the first year in the league in 97, we were owned, the the teams were owned by the WNBA. The salaries were paid by the WNBA. Mm -hmm. Then that five-year model after that, it changed. The business model changed. And then the teams took on the salaries. So I would say that most of all the teams, actually, when I first started, were owned by their brothers. Okay. and funded by their brothers and i think quite frankly some of the nba owners said i'm not doing this anymore i don't want to lose you know three four five million dollars a year and so they started telling the franchises independently mohegan sun atlanta you know uh, the same thing with the sparks are now on there there's many teams that are on their own and you can grow the business i mean the quality of basketball is at an all-time high mm -hmm. uh, great name recognition those athletes, again, uh, I believe, need to stay in the market because you have to interact. Uh, when I was coaching in Detroit in, in 1998, the three years I was there, uh, our players and myself, we did 811 community appearances. Wow. And other teams were like, cut it out. I'm like, no, we're at breakfast, lunch, dinner. Uh -huh. We were engaging the community, which is why you know we had over 10,000 a game and we were profitable. Yeah, you know, life is about grinding. Yeah. No matter who we are, we, sh you know, I mean, you have somebody as iconic as Ice Cube. Uh -huh. He is the hardest worker I know. Talk about a privilege to work for this man yeah. and his organization. He is a leader. He's a great husband. He's a, a great father. He's a great uh, owner. Uh -huh. He just leads the way with. He'll he'll do the smallest radio station or media. 
or Good Morning America. He's out front. He gives of himself. Uh, I want to be like that. Yeah. You know, I, I want to be just like him. He's and a visionary. He's unbelievable, yep. and he's humble. He's kind. He's confident. He's authentic. Uh huh. And he's Ice Cube, and everybody should want to be that hardworking guy that he is for who he is. Nancy Lieberman is here. Where can people find if they want to? Are y'all streaming this panel discussion, this Power of Brunch today, or how can people find it if they if they want to see it for themselves? We are not streaming it, but I guarantee you people are going to film it. Okay. And if the folks that are there, you know, from uh, Toyota or mm -hmm. Maya Octagon or the big three, I'm sure we'll have this and we'll get it and we can post it awesome. on social media. Okay. Mm -hmm. on, All right. on Insta or yeah. on... Uh, and the big three has a great website, too. A lot yeah. of information and a lot of work that you guys are doing in big three. Just go to the website. Okay. Mm -hmm. One of the questions I'm sure is going to be asked, asked because I was reading this press release, a press release about um, player and staff changes and it said effectively, immediately, Baron Davis, Bonzi Wells, Lamar Odom, Jermaine O'Neal will be deactivated for the 2019 big three season. What happened? That came from from Ice Cube and and leadership uh, uh -huh. of the big big three. I mean, I stay in my lane. I coach my team. Okay. But I mean, players have to play. If you want to get paid, you're gonna have to play, and uh -huh. that's how I saw it. Uh, I didn't know that was coming out. Okay. And I love the guys that were in that press release. I'm very close with them. It's a players' league, and if you can't play anymore, it, it happens to the best of us. Uh -huh. Uh, it, it, you're getting paid a lot of money, and I'm sure Ice Cube prefers to have you in a game on the court being who you were. So I, I, I stand behind everything that he does. Okay, then we touched on Glenn Big Baby Davis being – being yo, yo, your player. Oh, uh, being, the name sounded so familiar. Okay, yeah, yeah. He's, be, he's <laughs> being fined for behavior – Behavioral detrimental to the league this past week, past weekend, and that's when he. I think he what he undressed himself. He got a what? Ha what happened? He took his jersey off and. Okay, we have we were given new <laughs> new gray jerseys okay. for the first time. Okay. Gray is not in baby's color wheel. Yo, is that what it is? It's, that's oh really God. what happened. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, you know, he, he got a little agitated uh, uh -huh. with some calls, and they ended up uh, throwing him out of the game. So when he was walking off the court, he's a really cool guy, and he wanted fans to have his jersey and his shorts. Uh -huh. So he threw him in the stands. I'm sure he would have signed it had he had a Sharpie in his sock, but yeah, he did he, he wasn't able to do that. Uh, no. When I talked to him last year after you guys <laughs> won the championship, he, was, he, he wanted to come up here and freestyle. Um, Big Baby raps? Yeah, he got bars. Yes, he, he's... Mm. L let me let me say something about Big Baby. Um, <laughs> he is one of the nicest, kindest people uh, that I've ever been around. He's got a heart of gold. I know his daughter. I know his mom. And it, every teammate he's played for loves him. You know, I can remember when I was going to coach the team and I called Rondo and some of the guys that played mm -hmm. with him and I said, tell me, because I want to get to know these guys. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to pour love, kindness. Uh, I want them to know that I care uh, as human beings. So I wanted to know their moms, their kids, their their family members, because there's going to be an important time where I look at you in the eye and I'm like, stop it. But if I pour enough into you, it, I'm not going to get the hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it'll be give and take. Mm -hmm. And I want to do life with these guys. Baby is a very high character guy. He's a very loving guy. And I, I would have him on my team every day every of the week. Day. Okay. Every day. And I, I would go, uh, I want to be in the foxhole with him. Mm -hmm. He's going to take up a little bit more of that space, and I'm going to get crushed <laughs> up against the wall. <laughs> But, but I'm okay with that. You're okay with that. Is it a, is it different coaching men than it is coaching women? Uh, no. No, no difference, right? In your approach? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Because uh, the only difference is, you know, the physical attributes. Uh -huh. You know, what they can do. They could close out on one slide instead of maybe a woman taking two or three. Uh -huh. uh, they're playing above the rim, and most women don't play above the rim, but they know how to play the game, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. they can execute. Uh you know what? I, I, I've been coaching for over 25 years. If you show love, if you show kindness, if you're firm but fair, mm -hmm. if you come with the goods, you'll get the respect of your team. If you have somebody who is, you know, 
just not going to accept, you know, uh, your culture of what you're doing with your organization, you're going to have to trade them or let them go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not easy to do that. But we want to be able to have a purpose in what we do. And that's what Power did last year from day one when I flew to L.A. and met the guys. And we all knew each other's names. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I wanted to know how they knew each other. So think about it. Corey and Quentin Richardson grew up together in Chicago. Mm. Uh, Birdman and Catino have been friends since Birdman was 19, Uh right? You'd never put Mm. those two together. Uh, Baby, Corey, and Quentin played on the Clippers together. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of relationships that I had to navigate. And uh, quite frankly, I had to earn their respect and... They had to earn my respect, but that's what life is all about. And I just love these guys. Um, they're great men. They're faithful men. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've got a great spirit about them. And we were different. We knew we were different. Yeah, yeah. Because we weren't just playing basketball to win a championship. We were being cultural changers, mm-hmm. and we knew what was at stake. Uh, they were very much very supportive, and and very respectful and proud of me being their coach and I, i'm very grateful to them wow thank you nancy lady magic lieberman it's going to be at a power lunch today yep. a great great panel look out on social media how can people follow you uh you just go instagram nancy lieberman uh on twitter nancy lieberman or snapchat or any of uh whatever the your socials. devices uh-huh. are on social uh i do Interact with the fans uh, all the time because I'm interested in knowing what you have to say. If you have a question, ask me. If you have children, ask me. Uh, I'm here. You're here. I'm here. Whatever you need. And uh, I just appreciate the platform that I have and, you know, want to be able to share my knowledge and my experiences. Okay. And if you need me, I'm here. You know, I got a nice three-point shot. You know, (sighs) you might need that every now and then. Give up, Sway. Quit. Sway. (laughs) Yes. Get Eminem on the phone. Right now? Right now. All right, here, hold on. Because when I was coaching in Detroit, the only person that, and I've met a lot of people in my life, the only person I did not meet was Eminem, and I wanted to meet him so bad because I thought we had a lot in common Uh with pain and situations. He's the only guy I never met. So if I get him on the phone, I could come out and try out for the team? Absolutely. Damn it. All right, cool. I'm going to work on that. (laughs) What's the Price is Right failure sound when a guy go over the cliff? That. (laughs) Nancy Lieberman, thank you for coming by, okay? Thank you for having me. You guys are awesome. You too. God bless you all. And I love your story, too, okay?